Okay, so we just finished finding our equation for torque, um, where torque is equal to RF sine theta. Okay, so where F is the force applied to the object. R is the distance, and we say it's the distance from the pivot point where the object's going to rotate about. That's what we mean by the pivot point. So the distance from the pivot point to what we call the line of action of the force. Okay, so between the pivot point and where F is, is acting, okay? Of course, the force is measured in newtons. The distance is measured in meters. Theta is the angle between the R and the F. Okay, and then the torque at the tau is the torque generated. Okay, what's it measured in? It's measured in meter newtons. Or when you're cross multiplying, whoops, newtons. When you're cross multiplying two vectors, the order matters. So a meter newton is not the same as a newton meter. A newton meter is a joule, which is the unit for scalar things like work and energy. But torque is a vector, and so we'll write it as meter newtons. If you ever see it as a newton meter, you just think in your head, oh, that person's not really a physicist, because they would know that it matters, but it does. The order of the units, we keep it this way to imply this is the vector, this is the scalar, they're, they're not interchangeable. The angle between them, when would you get the most torque? You'll get the greatest torque when the angle between them, between the R and the F, is 90 degrees. Right? That's when you get the most torque. Um, if you think about trying to uh, open a door by pushing on the edge of the door, like into the door, there the angle between the R and the F, like your angle is going to be zero degrees and you'll get no torque. So the bigger the angle, closer to 90, the more torque you'll get. Um, think back to our door here. Like Think about the fact of where the handles are placed in doors. The handles are always placed on the outside edge so that for those of us who are not overly endowed with muscles, we still have a chance of opening the door. Now think of when where you push on a door when you go to open it. Like Think of some of the school doors to get out of the building. And if you're not paying attention, sometimes you push like close to the hinge, which is the pivot point, and the door won't budge. It's because your R is too tiny and you don't have a big enough F. You need a really big F if you're going to push like right in here. Okay, this also comes into play in sports. If you're tackling in football or hitting in hockey, you want to try to put that force on the person as far as possible away from their pivot point. And usually on a person, our pivot point is our center of mass which I'll come back to and talk about in a minute. But it's why you usually either hit low in football, like at the ankles, um, because if you hit up by their, sh or at the knees or whatever, if you hit up by their shoulders, it's much harder to knock them over because with all their equipment on, their center of mass is pretty high up there. All right, but before we go to that, we need to talk about the fact that force is a vector. And if it's a vector, then it has a direction. And so we need to think about what is the direction of the torque, okay? And there's a little rule that says if the torque is, um, is if the force is making the object want to rotate clockwise, then the torque is negative. And if the torque on the, uh, the force on the object wants to make the object rotate counterclockwise, then the force is positive. So how do we tell? You hold your writing utensil along the line of act, along the object, holding it at the pivot point, and then you push in the direction of the force. See if I could do this with one hand. And so when I push in the direction of this force, it makes my object want to rotate clockwise, 
And so that would go in as a negative torque when I do the sum of the torques on an object. Okay? Um, imagine a teeter-totter, a seesaw. Okay, it has a thing that it's balanced on. This thing that it's balanced on is usually called a fulcrum. Some of you may have heard of it. You put one kid on this side of the teeter-totter, one kid on this side of the teeter-totter. This kid's weight is acting down, FG1, this way. This kid's weight is acting down on this side, FG2. Here's your pivot point. Kid, and my box is in the way. Kid number two's mass, a kid number one's mass is going to make my writing utensil, when I put it along the, the uh, object that's going to rotate, it's going to make my writing utensil want to rotate counterclockwise. This guy will give me positive torque. On the other side, the FG over here is pushing down this way. It's going to make my writing utensil want to rotate clockwise. That's negative torque. So then when I did the sum of the torques is equal to zero, it would be torque of one minus the torque of two would equal zero. And then I could sub in like R, F1, which would be FG1 minus R, FG2. And if I knew the masses, I could solve for how far away one or the other needs to be. But I'm jumping ahead. Okay, but how you, so, so what we said was, uh, if the force makes the object rotate counterclockwise, it will be positive torque. And if it makes the object rotate clockwise, it will be negative torque. Okay, and I know you're thinking it's backwards. Not my fault. They did it with their right hand. Uh, Science 12, two people, you would understand that. Um, and that's why it's now, it's opposite. When they came up with this hand rule, it was right hand and, yeah. Okay, so you can now solve for torque. Um, the force might be the weight, like it is on a seesaw. It might be a force you're pushing with. It depends on the scenario, okay? The R is always the distance from the pivot point to where the force is acting. So on my teeter-totter or my seesaw, this would be R2. This would be R1 where my Fs would be the Fgs. Now, in, in reality, the fulcrum is putting a force on here, too. It would be pushing up. But the weight of the board is also pushing down, okay? Because the board, now we have to worry about the torque caused by the mass of the object, because now the object has dimensions. So this would be the Fg of the board. But need, So there's uh, force from each of them here. But neither of them are going to have a torque because their R's are zero. Remember, torque is um, not only the force being applied, but how far that force is from the center of the pivot point. Well, these two are actually going straight through the pivot point, so the R is zero. So there would be no torque here when we did the sum of the torques. There would just be one from the two people sitting on either side. Okay? All right. So now we need to talk about what's called center of mass. Oh, I should say one more thing, and that is for all the questions that we do, the sum of the torques will always be zero. You'll be finding like the values that will prevent it from moving. Like So you'll be finding that like just before it's about to rotate. So the sums of the torque will always be zero. Some of the forces M A, and so it goes to zero and A is zero. This would be rotational motion. So it would have rotational acceleration, and that gets left until you get to university. Although when we play in the hall, I might tell you about it a little bit. We do have to play in the hall. Okay, but for all of us, we'll be in all of our questions will be in rotational equilibrium. Okay, the one last thing for torque that I need to talk to you about is called center of mass. Every object has a center of mass. If it's a nice uniform shape, like maybe this ruler, then the center of mass is probably going to be smack dab in the middle. And so if I put my finger in the right spot, it's going to balance this object. If I put my finger in the middle, my ruler is balanced perfectly. Okay? Um, but if an object is not perfectly uniform, it's a little bit harder to find the center of mass. It still has one, it's just not going to be in the middle. And why do we need the center of mass? We need it because that's where the object's weight will appear to be acting. 
so for the board here we need 